Hello everyone, welcome to NEET PG 2024 recall question discussion. But before that, as all of you know about the alleged rape and murder case of second year postgraduate trainee of RG Corps Medical College, Kolkata. So we are deeply saddened. We demand proper investigation and arrest of the accused with highest level of capital punishment. I am asking every medicals to stand with us to secure safety in medical colleges and other educational institution to prevent such heinous crime in near future. So starting with question number one, which one is correct about sequence of rigor mortis? So as all of you know, rigor mortis order of appearance externally start with eyelids, then it involves jaw, then your facial muscles, then neck, then followed by thorax, followed by your upper limb, followed by abdomen, followed by lower limb, followed by fingers and toes. So this is the sequence of appearance of rigor mortis or post-mortem stiffening. And the first site usually involuntary muscle and the first site of rigor mortis uh, involuntary muscles in the myocardium. But first external site is always eyelid followed by jaw, face, neck, thorax, upper limb, abdomen, lower limb and fingers to toe. So eyelid to lower limb. So definitely the answer would be it should be head to foot. So the answer of this question is head to foot, not center to periphery or foot to head or simultaneously. Coming to question number two, JSSK full form. It is very clear cut question, straightforward question. This is Janani Shishu Shuroksha Karyakram. So JSSK, Janani Shishu Shuroksha Karyakram. Next coming to question number three, a patient underwent gastrectomy, which vitamins replacement or supplementation is needed after surgery. So as all of you know, stomach helps to release a factor that is known as intrinsic factor or intrinsic factor of casual and this binds with vitamin B12 and form a complex which ultimately helps in the absorption of vitamin B12 from the terminal ileum. So for absorption of vitamin B12, the presence of intrinsic factor of casual is necessary. So whenever the patient will undergo gastrectomy, there will be no release of intrinsic factor of casual. So there will be hamper and hamper in the absorption of vitamin B12. So definitely patient will develop the sign and symptoms of vitamin B12 deficiency. That is why following gastrectomy patient may require patient requiring vitamin B12 supplementation. So the answer is vitamin B12. Question number four, patient came to ER. Patient was found unconscious near any railway station. On examination, patient was hot with flash skins and dilated pupil. The suspected poisoning is obviously this is dhatura poisoning or atropine poisoning. One thing to tell everyone because these questions are recalled by some of my juniors. I may be wrong in some question. Please let me know in the comment section so whether I am dealing the right questions or not. Okay. So these are the sign symptoms of dhatura poisoning or atropine poisoning. So and the as all of you know, the antidote of this poisoning is physostigmine and the sign symptoms are hot as hair, increased body temperature or fever, red as beet like face flashed conjunctiva red, blind as bat because of pupil dilatation, photophobia, diplopia, dry as bone, there will be dryness of mouth and throat, dysphagia, nausea, vomiting, drunken gait, etc. So D, 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 dry, dry skin, dysphagia, diplopia, drunken gait, dilated pupil. So these are the features of dhatura poisoning or atropine poisoning. Coming to question number five, patient complain of dysphagia on examination, absent gag reflex. So a patient with dysphagia, absent gag reflex, as all of you know, cranial nerve nine and 10, 
means glossopharyngeal nerve and vagus nerve is involved with this gag reflex pathway so the here the nerve implicated is cranial nerve 9 and 10 glossopharyngeal nerve and vagus nerve coming to question number 6 this chart is used for which disease it is very clear this chart is used for yes you are very right this is used for prolapse uterine prolapse this is nothing but popq grid chart for classification of uterine prolapse next coming to question number seven which of the following drug of multiple myeloma therapy regimen causes reactivation of herpes zoster so this is nothing but your bortezomib that is why during therapy with bortezomib in multiple myeloma you should give prophylaxis for herpes zoster reactivation so bortezomib is the answer for this question of reactivation of herpes zoster in a patient of multiple myeloma during treatment this is straightforward question this is logo of yes you are very right this is logo of nlep national leprosy elimination program so national leprosy elimination program so this is the emblem and this signifies the beauty and purity in this lotus leprosy can be cured and leprosy patient can be useful member of the society from a partially affected thumb and normal forefinger represented in the shape of the house and this rising sun symbol of hope and optimism so this is the emblem of national leprosy elimination program or nlep question number nine i think column matching question was there with four ecg so you have to identify all the ecg as you can see there is flutter wave or sawtooth wave so this is nothing but atrial flutter just look at the long lead to here p wave is repre re replaced by some sawtooth wave in between qrs so these are nothing but flutter wave so this is atrial flutter this is narrow qr complex tachycardia or svt supraventricular tachycardia this is ventricular tachycardia broad qrx complex tachycardia and here it is you can see there is no p wave there is irregular rr interval no p wave so this is nothing but your atrial fibrillation so the ecg of atrial flutter atrial fibrillation with uh, supraventricular tachycardia and ventricular tachycardia i think column matching question was there so you have to correctly identify each ecg and you have to match the column a uh, number a so number a ecg atrial flutter b ecg supraventricular tachycardia c you know, number c ecg is ventricular tachycardia d is atrial fibrillation question 10 patient of cervical carcinoma and there was involvement of pelvic wall and hydronephrosis was also noted so the question asked was what is the stage of cervical carcinoma so look at this 2020 figo classification of cervical stage if you look carefully this stage extension to pelvic wall on and or hydronephrosis or non-functioning kidney so this all pelvic wall extension hydronephrosis and or non-functioning kidney comes under stage 3b of cervical cancer according to 2020 figo staging so the answer is 3b so in the next video we are going to discuss 11 to 20 so stay tuned and don't forget to subscribe my channel for all neat pg recall questions thank you for your attention